Well, my go-to smoker slash grill for camping just caught on fire the other day and it's destroyed, so I had to pick up something new. We got the Weber Go Anywhere. So I had just cleaned off the smoker. I was just getting it up to temperature and then I was just gonna scrub it a little bit more with a wire brush. Next thing I know, the thing is caught on fire and worse than that, it caught my generator on fire too. So lost both of those and instead of picking up a new pellet smoker, I started looking back towards charcoal slash wood and that's how we got to the Weber Go Anywhere. Somehow I just never heard of this thing. Uh, I've rocked a couple of Webers. I've got the Weber Smoky Mountain. I've got a Weber Kettle. I use them both all the time. On the trail, I was kind of looking for something a little bit easier, something with a a lower fire hazard than using charcoal. After looking at the Go Anywhere, I realized, you know, it's kind of a rectangular shape. Maybe we can do some offset smoking with this thing. And I've had three cooks on it so far. All three have gone great. Um, we've done sausages, steak, and well, I guess we did sausages twice. But anyways, worked out great. It's like anything I do or really any Weber, they could use some modifications. Although this grill works really well for smoking too, there are some things that I'd like to change on it. So the first one is is it doesn't have a temperature gauge. And yeah, I have a Bluetooth temp gauge thing, but when you're out camping, I don't wanna be using my phone. I don't wanna mess with that. So I wanna get a temperature gauge to throw onto the Weber. Um, hopefully I can get an accurate temp reading so the smoking can be more accurate. Also the metal grates on the top get really hot when you have got the lid on and it's heating up to temperature and you can't even touch it with your bare hand. So I'm gonna try to throw some handles on there. And then lastly, Webers are kinda of known for not having the best seal on the lid there so I am going to try to put some insulation around there and try to keep that smoke and heat from escaping so show you the parts we got let's get going so this isn't some fancy fake barbecue show this is what this looks like you know I haven't really cleaned up anything this is how I have been grilling and smoking with it it's on the table in the backyard So basically it sucks in cold air, the coals put out the smoke, it comes this way and it comes out this exhaust vent right here. So I have a couple different options. I've seen some people remove the handle, put their temp gauge right here. I've seen some people put it right here and then I've seen them put it here or here. So here's my thought on this. I don't want the temp gauge over the coals, which would be that side, because then it's just gonna read really hot. I want an accurate reading. I want whatever temperature it is by the meat. You know. The other thing is the probe at the end of the temp gauge is gonna stick in there. So if I do it right here, probe is gonna go right down into the coals. Here, it's gonna be pretty close. Here, it's probably gonna hit the meat. So what I'm kind of leaning towards right now is basically half of the flat part and a little bit of the rounded part, trying to get it as high up on here as I can. Because what I foresee myself doing with this a lot is sausages, broth, or steaks, where I can kind of split the middle and have something on each side. I don't want that probe resting on the meat because that's gonna throw everything off. So, might not even let the lid close all the way because it'll be hitting some steaks. That's the plan. Let's, let's just see what we're looking at here. Eh, three quarters to an inch below the top and it'll be centered right under this exhaust vent. I, I think that's what we're gonna go with. Let's go get the probe. So here's the probe I picked up. It is from Oklahoma Joe's. Is it blasphemy to throw this on the Weber? Yeah, probably. Anyways, you can see on the back, I picked this one because the shank on it is pretty short. Unfortunately, this part with the nut is pretty big. So we are gonna have to drill a fairly decent sized hole in there. Overall, I think this thing is like three inches. So it is kind of on the larger side. But the other thing I like about it is the aesthetics. It looks good. I think it's gonna look good with the black. The face glows in the dark. And lastly, I like how it has the uh, zones split up temperature wise. So you got the smoke, barbecue, and the grilling. An easy way to just identify where you are, you know, by a quick look at it. All right, let's get this thing ready. All right, so there it is on the bottom right there. You can see it goes right over the vent like I was hoping. A little bit lower than I was hoping for, but I think it's gonna work. That's how it looks on the front right there. This part is complete. So the next part is the handles. We've gotta drill through 
the metal vent handle on there and basically extend them. So I found some cool ones on Amazon. They are plastic, but they're nice and heavy. They have a really thick shank down the middle. So all I had to do is buy some nuts and a couple lock washers. We're gonna drill those holes through the vents and we'll just put a handle on each side. There we go, we've got our handles on here. You might need to bend them up a little bit. That's what I did. I ended up bending this up so it could clear the temp gauge. And then another thing you'll notice about these is they have a little bit of slop in them because these ones are made to spin. Didn't really consider that. Here's the roll of the felt lining that I'm gonna use for keeping all the smoke inside there and bridging that gap, sealing it up. If you wanna see any of these items, just look down in the description. I've got them all linked down there so you can grab the same ones, depending on how well this all works out. All right, it's in there. That was pretty easy. You can probably see how fast I put that on. It feels pretty sticky, uh, the adhesive on the back. Let's see how she feels just dropping her on. Oh yeah, there's not even any wiggle left on it. There used to be some wiggle left to right. She's solid, so. All right, we got everything on there. We've got the temp gauge, we've got our new handles for the vents, and we've got our liner for the inside. So next thing, I'm just gonna clean all this mess up, clean the smoker up, pretty good, and then we are gonna do a cook. We've got a small tri-tip to put on here, so we'll see how that works. Find out if everything I did was worth it or just made for a fun video. Well, we tidied it up a little bit. I didn't polish it for you, but it's clean and ready to go. So we've got some charcoal started right now, about a third of chimney. Got a, a little bit of charcoal down here. Where the chimney is right now is where we're gonna put our little drip pan again. And then I'm hoping to get about an hour, 300 degrees. We'll see if we can do it. All right, I think this is like an eight by eight pan. And then I just get an 18 by 18 piece of foil and wrap it up. Now you could use one of those disposable pans too. Might be easier for some people, but I find this works pretty well. And then you can ball up all the gunk in there once the uh, drippings get mixed with the ashes or whatever. So you don't have to throw the whole thing away. If you forget the aluminum foil, you can just use the pan, not a big deal, but you will have to clean it out obviously. All right, the coals are like, I don't know, 75%, which is where I want them. Got our drip pan in there. Make sure all the charcoal is below where the rack is gonna sit in there. Throw our new charcoal in. Throw our grate on there. Scrape off some of the gunk. And then this was 1.4 pounds of tri-tip, so not too big. And it looks like it's gonna fit really well on there. I'm gonna try to put it over on the side a little bit so the probe doesn't hit it. Got the gauge on the right side. And yeah, got this one full open. This one over the coals is gonna be closed. Oh yeah, she's creeping up. It looks like it's doing a lot better on not letting anything escape from the side. So before we had a ton coming out of the side. You can kind of see a little bit down there, but I believe it's from the vent. Looking good. All right, we'll just keep an eye on this. I have a digital probe that I'm gonna stab into it. Once it gets to like 125-ish, I'm gonna throw it directly over the coals and do a reverse sear on it. All right, let's see how we're doing out here. So I haven't even checked on this in a minute and we're at like, I don't know, 305, something like that. Doing pretty good. So it's just getting a little bit above 300 right now. So I'm gonna try to get ahead of it. Close this vent just a tad. This handle, it's definitely warm, but it's not hot. So I'd say that's working. See a fair amount of smoke coming out there. So I'm doing just charcoal. I haven't even put any uh, wood on it. I guess I could. I didn't really consider it. Just, you know, I feel like charcoal does a great job with the flavor itself. This one we're going to do just the charcoal. We'll try wood next time, but it's closed probably, I don't know, a quarter of the way. We'll see if we can get it to hang out around 300 there. Looks like it's sealed up pretty good though. I don't see much escaping from the sides. Awesome. All right, 15 minutes later. Wow, we're at 300 on the dot. Oh my gosh. Got the digital thermometer here. Let's, uh, let's see how this works. When you expose this side of charcoal, it gets a little bit of more color on it. it. Cooks a little bit faster. I dig it. I like it. Probably hard for you guys to see that, but it's saying 80, about 83. I've got a little bit to go, but what I'm gonna do here is, I forgot my fork here, so probably give it, I don't know, another six minutes or so. Once we hit 100, I'm gonna flip it the other way. And then, like I said, once we hit 125, we'll go over the coals. Been 15 so far. Trying to sneak open on me, I don't think so. Gonna open this back up while we, Try to get up to 300 again. Temp has jumped up a little bit. We're at like 330. Not a big deal. Slower down. Probably needs to be about there. 
once we put the lid back on. Let's see what she's at now. Ooh, all right, 103. She's ready. Let's let's flip her over. I forgot my fork again. Jeez Louise. Guys, I'm not a pro griller, barbecuer person, so you'll just have to bear with me, all right? Jeez, even this plastic handle is, is getting a little warm on here, to be honest. Temp didn't drop that much. It's at right about just under 300 right now, so leave it where. I'll leave it right there. Let's do it. Mmm, smelling good out here. All right, where are we doing? Ooh, jumped up quite a bit in the temp. All right, see where we're at. 119. Man, we are right there. Okay, before we finish this up over the coals, let's move it to right there. Gonna give this just a couple of minutes. Get up. We've got about six more degrees to go on the temp. Turn the heat down a little bit. Man, this, uh, the bolt that's exposed right there, still very hot. I'm not gonna lie, this plastic part got a little warm too, so I can definitely grab onto it and hold it, but that got a lot hotter than I thought it was. Yeah, let's turn that heat down just a little bit. Oops, I didn't put the lid on all the way. Now we got a nice seal. Six more degrees. I don't know. Give it a couple minutes. Give it like three minutes. All right. Temperatures jumped up to 350. Oh yeah, dude, we are like right there. Maybe I am a pro. Sear time. Oh yeah. All right, that's about it for the cook. We've got about 10 minutes ahead of us. Uh, once it's done searing on here, I'm gonna let it rest for those 10 minutes, then I'll cut her up. I like my tri-tip cooked. Honestly, above medium rare. I know I said it, but I just think it tastes better that way. It's less chewy, and I usually reheat my leftovers the next day, and you know, I just think it's better that way. I don't know. All right, judge me. I think everything we did is kind of proven here, right? So. Everything worked. It was a bunch of simple mods. You know, to come clean, I didn't do the best job with it. I'll admit it. My first hole that I drilled into the top of the Weber punched just the center punch in it. It chipped off a huge piece of the enamel, which kind of sucks, but we drilled through all that anyway, so it doesn't matter. I didn't file down the edges or anything. I kind of just scraped them off. Um, same with the handles, and then I just used those nuts to like push on the edges. So could I fix it later? Yes. Will you do a better job? I'm sure you will. I set a pretty low bar for you guys, so you copy me and do it better and take all the credit for it. I don't really know how much this costs. I'd say it's probably like 30 bucks. Um, I'd have to look down at everything I picked up again, but like I said, I'll put all that down in the description. It's there for you. Go check it out. If you purchase off of those links, then I get a small kickback from Amazon Associates. So that'd be cool. It goes back in the channel to do stuff like this. Now, after our cook, would I do everything the same that I did in this video? I think I might go with a different handle just because those plastic ones, I think because the bolt down the center, uh, that metal bolt is so thick that it's just making a lot of heat transfer into the handle. So they are cool enough to touch, but they're warm enough to where it is uncomfortable to hold on to them for a long period. Of course, you don't need to hold on to them for too long. And you know, for my purposes, it, yeah, got a little bit more color on there because I got sidetracked talking to you guys. So coals, we went through like two thirds of it. So that was too much, but hey, now we know. And uh, let's see the that felt lining that we put in there. Perfect, no more rattle. Kept all of that heat and smoke in. And the temp gauge, uh, it's hard to know unless I had another thermometer in there to see how accurate it was. But for my purposes here, I think it's accurate enough. I think it looks really good. It's easy to read. I was actually reading it from inside my house to see where it was at. Yeah, total time. Couldn't tell you, I have to add up everything I said in the video, but you know, smoking for me, I say smoke, there's no wood on it or anything, but smoking for me is kind of just like trying new things and not being rushed for time. I just try to have fun with it and chill. It's great to do it out on the trail. Really stoked that I have this option to do it. Pellet smoker might be the way to go for some people. We sure loved it for about a year until it caught up in flame. But uh, yeah, this really cool option. Who knows, I might even try the uh, propane version. Guys, thanks for checking out this video. I'm not the grill master. I can't do it. Uh, this stuff tastes great. So if you guys like this video and you want to see more stuff like this, you want to see the different things we're doing on the trail, I was thinking about maybe doing one for coffee. Coffee's big for me too. Let me know. Put it down in the comments. Thanks for watching this whole thing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.